This is the video lesson for section 6-5, which is called Conditions for Rhombuses, Rectangles, and Squares. Now, basically what we're going to be learning in this section is the opposite of what we learned yesterday. So each of the theorems that we learned in last night's video, we are going to be learning the converse of today. So we have two learning objectives. The first one is that we can determine whether there's enough information to conclude, whoops, whether a parallelogram is a rhombus, rectangle, or square, and then we're also going to find requested values using those special properties. So again here, I just wanted to remind you of this Venn diagram that I gave you in the video yesterday, and you see, you see on the left is our rhombus, on the right is our rectangle, and then everywhere in here where there's overlap is what we call our square. So remember, the square is like the hybrid of the rhombus and the rectangle. It possesses all of those properties. So here are the first two theorems for this section. Our first theorem is theorem 616, which is the converse of 613. So this is the opposite of what we learned yesterday. If the diagonals of a parallelogram are perpendicular, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. So yesterday we learned if it's a rhombus, then we know that our diagonals must be perpendicular. Now we're going the opposite way. If we know that our diagonals are perpendicular, then we absolutely must have a rhombus. In this second theorem, theorem 617, this is the converse of theorem 614 from yesterday. If one diagonal bisects one pair of opposite angles, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. So now, if we happen to see these congruent angles here because a diagonal has bisected opposite angles, then we know it must absolutely positively be a rhombus. And the last theorem that we have is theorem 618, which is the converse of 615. If the diagonals of a parallelogram are congruent, then the parallelogram must be a rectangle. So if I see that I have congruent diagonals, I know that my parallelogram is a rectangle. And then remember, if we need to find a square, we must have a rectangle and a rhombus. So I must have two of these properties together. So let's look at our first example here. Can you conclude whether the following shapes are rhombuses, rectangles, or squares? So I'm looking for some of these properties to determine whether these things are rhombuses, rectangles, or squares. So in this first example, I see that I have these tick marks, meaning that my diagonal has bisected angles. This means I have a rhombus. In the second example here, I see two things. I see this right angle box. That right angle box tells me my diagonals are intersecting perpendicularly. So that's a rhombus. But I also have these tick marks here. This tells me that I have a rectangle. So I have a rhombus and a rectangle, which means I have a square. So then there's two you try problems. Please try those out and bring your answers to class tomorrow. The last thing we're going to look at here is including algebra in these problems. So for the example, I want to know what is the value of x that I need in order for parallelogram ABCD to be a rhombus? Well, if I want this thing to be a rhombus, then I must have this diagonal bisecting my angles, which means what I want to do is set 6x minus 2 equal to 4x plus 8. And then I'm just going to go through and I'm going to solve by moving my 4x and then my 2. I end up with 2x equals 10, which after I divide gives me x equals 5. And I have answered their question. They wanted the value of x. I gave them the value of x. And then there's a you try problem for you to do and also bring that answer with you to class. Make sure you've got all of these notes taken down and I'll be checking them for credit in class tomorrow. Have a great night. See you tomorrow in class.